So I know you were looking for the far farthest and more quiet room in the conference. I don't want to disturb you, but I'm going to start speaking and saying stuff right now, so I hope you will start the chat. So I'm talking about universal logins and meta transactions, right? I think, I, I hope you've been hearing about the word meta transaction a lot, because you should. Meta transactions are, are awesome. Right, really. Uh, so, what is a meta transaction exactly, right? It is when I want to uh, wake up people, right? Yay, meta transactions, you're awesome. So, what is a meta transaction, right? We have basically a boring transaction, which is just an order model. Uh, I don't see this word. Uh, so, a boring transaction, like it's an order with your transaction, is when the, the user needs to pay and understand what is the gas and they need to have money for it. They need to buy Ether because they need to buy gas, right? Which is weird because maybe your app doesn't involve Ether at all, but maybe your app just moves like little soccer players around, but still you need to have Ether for that. <coughs> and you need to understand, you have to own your private key, you have to manage your private key, you cannot move your private key. And if you create a new key, if you move, let's say, to a new app, the user now has to pay to move funds to a new key. Or, or if he wants to share keys, it's super insecure, it's terrible, right? So there's a new thing called meta transactions since like last year. And the idea being that the user uses a, a private key not as a storage of funds, but really as a place, as a way to sign ephem ephemeral messages where that key can be discarded later and he just uses to sign messages. And those messages are then sent to a contract which verifies and does actions on behalf of the user. Sometimes that contract can be, let's say, a central contract that does something, like an exchange. Sometimes that, that, that contract can be an identity contract that allows you to do anything you want. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the, the idea is there's a contract that has, uh, you know, understands those transactions. And, and the main idea behind like, the advantage of splitting those two together, those two differently, is that suddenly anyone can now deploy and pay the gas on behalf of the user, which creates a lot of new business models that you, you can do, right? You can now have your own users and they pay you some, some other way. Maybe they pay your credit card, but you, they still do it in blockchain. Or maybe you have like a free user with a free trial, things, those things like that. And <clears throat> because those keys are ephemeral, the keys themselves don't hold any funds, the user can create new keys as they will, revoke new key, old keys, so that you can use them in multiple applications. And you don't need to share private keys, because each private key will have an application. So it's one key per device, safe. So why, why were you doing that, right? So I'm going to take a step back and say it's something I believe, right? So I'm a designer, I also develop, but I'm also a designer. And I, I like to say that good design is not decoration, right? The difference, like good design is not the difference between the left clock and the right clock. The, a good design is what happens behind the clock, right? It's something that you, 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 you work with engineering to create, a, like to, to create like a very simple thing that you can put an interface on top of it, right? The, what, what I'm trying to say is often if you want to do something to look simple and to look nicey, nicely, you have to add more complexity and then you hide it with good design, right? The thing on top is just the skin, right? It's just like a decoration. So, two things, and, and the, 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 so the thing we are trying to solve is simple, right? So the two things every crypto app needs to, uh, all, the user always needs to do, right? They first, they need to create a key, and they need to put money on it, right? That's, that's the essence of onboarding. And you can make your onboarding with as much decoration as you want. You can put animations, great illustrations. You can put a bunch of things. But in the end, there is this complexity behind it in which you have to create a key and put money on it. And you thought there's no way around it. And what happens suddenly if there's a second device or a second app and the user already wants to use it, right? You, you don't, don't expect your user to have, like, your, you're not the only uh, it's your app you are going to ever use on your only device. So what you can do is you can go through the same process again, and then you move the key around, right? You create a new key and move the funds from the old key. Suddenly what happens is that now you're leaving a little bit of money on, on each, not only on the transaction, but often you leave a little bit of money on every transaction. 
So it's weird, right? Like, every time you install a new application, you have to like pay to move a little bit of money. I think that's that's very bad. Another thing people do is that they simply duplicate the key and use both, use them on both. And like I've done this like multiple times, right? Like, the third time someone asks you to write down a seed phrase, you, go, you say, oh, you know what, I'm going to just import my MetaMask seed phrase, that's okay. Which is not okay, right? You, you shouldn't trust Coinbase with the same trust that you trust MetaMask, right? Those are different sort of things, and maybe you, do, you, like, you don't want them to have access to all your funds forever. So, the third thing some people can do is that they keep a key on the server instead, right? And even if the server is non-custodial, which is possible, you can do a bunch of things with, like maybe you're encrypting the private key with the password and there's a secret nonce that only the server knows. You can do a lot of things to make it non-custodial and safe. But still, we have the same problem in that if, if the server disappears, you are back to the same problem that you have now to either have to move the keys around or share the keys around, you're sort of back again, right? It's not, it's not really decentralized. So what can we do with magic of meta production, right? Boom, meta transactions. How do they make it more awesome? They make it more awesome by, you have now, every single device has a different key, which has the advantage of, hey, it's more secure, you're gonna have to, have to share devices, but where the fund is stored, like, the, 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 the funds are not stored with the devices, it's stored with the ro uh, like a big robot, right? Why is that big robot? It can be a contract, it can be a bunch of things, and because your little big robot lives on the cloud, he can also own other things, like, like, an NS thing. Like, an NS thing is awesome too. And it's, the, it's great because suddenly your robot can have a name. And because you can have a name, you, can, you, you don't need to remember your hex address anymore, and people can just send it to your robot name, and your robot can have also die or other tokens, and because someone else is already paying the fee for you, you can use those, those funds to pay for your, your transactions. So you can pay your transactions in die, or maybe you can even pay your transactions in, in collectibles if you're creative enough, right? Maybe you create a... a crazy market where, where if you own a collectible, I will pay all the transactions for you for a whole month. Like, I don't know, right? And you can even like keep the key on a server, right? It doesn't, so it, it sort of has the advantage of all those, those other methods, right? You have, you can keep a key on the server for a backup, but it's a different key to the other ones. Like it's a recovery key, which can have like extra magic on it. You, and you, you don't need to share keys and the, every time you sign on a new app, you, and the main advantage is, every time you sign on a new app, if you are already done the onboarding, you don't need to do, on, to do the onboarding again, right? And so this, this thing has been basically happening since last year. Uh, like, we've had like, multiple people trying to do similar things, but I would say that like, the name of transactions appear at DevCon, and people got, got together, and a bunch of people worked together. And I would love to show you like, how it looks. So this is an example of universal login, which is the app I'm working on, and I think it's a great example of how universal logins can, can help onboarding. Um, you have two apps, right? Evidence and Kickback. Let's start by Kickback, right? The idea then, all you need to do when you sign in with Kickback is you have to type a username, right? I just typed like one username, notice I don't have MetaMask there, I don't need to have a MetaMask there. Um, next thing I will do is that I will like I don't have money either, so because it's kickback, I need money, I'm gonna use an unramping provider. What we do at Universal Login is that we have multiple connections with multiple unramping providers because we've noticed that sometimes one unramping provider is better in the country or not, so we sort of try to select which one is the best for you. We are using, I think, Safel, no, that's, that's RAM. Right. And RAM allows you to connect directly to a bank account if you are in a few countries that have accepted. So I think it's, it's interesting thing that you connect to a bank account and boom, we deploy the contract to you and you're already signing on, on you're already signing on kickback, right? That particular Ethereum address there is a Ethereum address for your contract and who now will be your address for every app that you sign in on, but that like your your private key will not necessarily be that one, right? And then suddenly like we can we already sign in, we can just go in, select one event on Kickback and say, hey, RSVP, I'm gonna pay 
half a liter to say I'm gonna like I'm gonna stake a little bit of money here and then boom I'm in right I I sign up without having ever to install MetaMask see a private key see a uh, even even see a, 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 a hex address if you think about it and I think that's already like wow that's cool enough but what happens if you now want to install a second app right so kickback you probably know it's an event thing where you you stake money and then you pay and if you go to the event you get your money back with with like a little plus and evidence is another app which is cool it's a sort of time stamping app it sort of creates certificates for you saying hey this, this was uploaded this time or that time. And how it works is that, so what you have to do there is just type your same username, right? You type, you, you pick the username before, now all you need to do is connect to it. And what will happen is that it's gonna show you a few emojis. Um, now you go to the previous app you had and you just approve that new device on there. We're using those emojis to prevent a man in the middle attack to make sure that, look, this is the same address. It also helps prevent, uh, if, 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 if there was a relayer creating a thousand connections for you, the emojis also help because you can use them to filter them out. So all you need to do, right, you see what the emojis are you see in the device, you type on the, on the, the same ones. We, like, we are just doing the game where you have to type it just because we want to make sure the user is confirming. We, we actually could just ask him to confirm, but I think it's better if you ask him to do an option to make sure that it's the same, it's the same one. And um, once you do that, maybe this guy is signing an error transaction, sending it to a relayer, and then boom, like that guy is now approved. Notice that this one and that one, they have two different private keys which you never saw. And now we can do whatever you wanted to do. Like in this case, we are taking a picture, uploading it, and we're going to upload it, get a certificate that this picture was uploaded or right, was created on, on, on this thing. Which I think timestamping is one, one of those things that has existed for a long time in, in like, you can, you can do that in Bitcoin forever, but I don't think anyone has like cracked it. And I think they haven't cracked it because of usability, right? Because it's never been as easy as this, as just, hey, I've just done a timestamp, right? Um, like we've done just two applications in like five minutes, let's, Let's do a third one, just because it's cool, right? So now this is Jarvis, Jarvis is an actual wallet. You do the same thing, just type a username, you connect without, uh, without having a password, confirm the little emojis, and you're in. And the third cool thing about this is that during this time when we were like doing like all connection, all, all those apps, now we have uh, your account being secure by three different apps, in three, made by the three different people with probably three different devices, which means that if suddenly like you lose your your phone where you had your 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 evidence or private keys, you can just use Kickback and maybe Jarvis to connect to confirm. And another thing interesting on Jarvis is that Jarvis is a wallet. Um, when you send money to someone in Jarvis you see that the, 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 the funds are shared between those. It means like both Kickback and Jarvis see the same amount of funds, it's just that they have different uh, permissions to, to, to set it. And because it's a, uh, a smart contract, you can do all sorts of permissions. Like this app is allowed to, to take as much as a design, like this, this amount per day and things like that. And like you just sign in with three apps in like ten minutes in Ethereum without having to do like even see a seed trade. And I think that is awesome. There is though something super interesting also, right? So this is how kickback that, that's how kickback could be. This is how kickback is working like currently, which is uh, like this is block native, it's super cool block native. And if, but in the end, it's really like, hey, I see you're trying to set up your team account, let me help you. I'm going to help you install MetaMask, and I'm going to help you install, uh, connect to it, etc. Which, it's a step up from like this, which you see in most, most guys, right? Oh, sign in, sign, just sign in with MetaMask. And then I can say, hey, we can replace that by just doing this, right? Hey, sign in with your MetaMask or universal login. Or we could put, Here's the interesting thing. Since like last year, there are like more and more authentication providers, and now there's like Portis. Um, there's also Fortmartic, uh, Ethereum, right? And all those are valid. Maybe we should have all those. 
And there's also tutorials which allow you to connect with the genome device using a traditional OAuth social network. So maybe this should be the solution, right? Where you can connect with anything you want, right? Sign in Facebook, or maybe wallet connector, maybe bump two phones together, maybe use a QR code, maybe use a sound shirt, I don't know, like anything. And, and the problem with that is that people tell, hey, don't worry about this. Like it's just going to be like markets going to resolve it. There's going to be eventually there's going to be one or two apps, and I see a problem with that because, like, MetaMask and then Universal Logins and then Portis and Fortmatix and Facebook, like they're just spokes on a wheel, right? This one's on top and the other one's on top and on and on and on and on, crushing every everyone behind it, right? And we don't want like to stop the wheel. Right? Stopping the wheel means like we get someone on top, maybe me, like maybe, yeah, I, I will be on top. It's like, I don't want your help to put me on top or put you on top. What I want your help is really, you know where I'm going with this, to break the wheel, right? And, but why are we you like breaking the wheel? The idea of breaking the wheel is we should have a system to log in that is not signing with MetaMask or signing with Universal Login. It should be something like signing with Ethereum. Right? Or maybe just like signing in with your DNS name, right? Something that allows you to own your your own profile. How would it look like? What it should look like is something like you click the button and it checks if you already have a Web3 browser. Because if you already have a Web3 browser, then you can already use that. And if you don't have a Web3 browser, or if you deny it, if you don't want to use it, if you click no, then you get a username. Why a username? Like a username is like the one or, or even like optionally, you can even use a mobile app, you click here just to point it, like just have a small thing there. But ideally, we should have a username, and I think we can get, we can all like get together around ENS names. ENSs are awesome, ENS is what you should use to identify yourself. Should not be an email, should not be an SMS, because those are problematic. And what should happen is that if you already have a ENS, if you don't have a ENS name, uh, with that username, what can happen is that we can offer you to create something. Like, hey, create something with Universal Login. Or maybe create something with Art. Or maybe create something with something else. And, and there's... And, and if you already have it, if you already have one of those, here's a cool thing. We can use ENS to query the authentication method. I don't know to know every, every type of authentication method. Maybe you, you don't want to do the meta transaction. Maybe you just want to do a traditional OAuth. I can go and query ENS for that. And maybe you can query ENS to know where is your return provider, like what, what is your return provider. And even extra, if I don't even have that, I can use ENS as a URL. Because ENS is not only .f domains, but any domain can be a ENS thing. So you can access a web page which is jane.unilogin.xyz, right? Or unilogin.io. And that could be the way in which you approve something, where you can, look, if I have no idea, but you do have ANS, I just go to that page and you click there to approve it, right? So this is sort of like my way of saying, like, this little, like, uh, method here is what I call, like, my war is over, uh, moment because I, I it's not that there is a war, but I think that there was a war breeding among like every single like, authentication method, right? There were, there's a bunch of authentication methods in Ethereum, and by infighting with each other, we are really just losing the bigger war, which is against the traditional like big giants that want to control the information. What we want is to create uh, uh, like really a universal way in which you log in into apps and you control the information, right? Maybe your, your data is stored in Treebox, so you control it. Your funds are stored in a smart contract, so you control it. And that's really the idea, right? And I think you can learn more about that on universallogin.io and like follow me on Twitter and send me emails if you have any questions about it. Thank you.